crude oil is one of the most important raw materials known to man. It takes millions and millions of years to form deep underground when plant and animal remains are buried in the absence of oxygen. Because it takes millions and millions of years to form, once we dig it out of the ground, it will not um, and use it will not then form again. Therefore, we say it's non-renewable. If you were to take a real close up and have a look at crude oil, you would actually find that it is a mixture of lots and lots of different compounds. Some of them are quite short, and some of them are much longer. All of these compounds um, that form crude oil are known as hydrocarbons. I've used circles to represent them here, but if I were to draw them more accurately, I might draw them something like this. If I was going to represent this one properly, I would draw one carbon atom surrounded by four hydrogens. If I were to draw this one properly, I would draw three carbon atoms. And around each carbon atom, I would make sure I have got four covalent, single covalent bonds. Okay, so crude oil it is made up of a wide range of different compounds, but the majority of them are known as alkanes. So how do I name these alkanes? Well, the way I remember, um, remember this is a simple um, mnemonic, which goes monkeys eat purple bananas. Okay, monkeys eat purple bananas. And this mnemonic corresponds, um, or the rows of this mnemonic correspond to the number of carbon atoms within my uh, compound. So the first row, monkeys, if I have a compound um, or hydrocarbon, an alkane, sorry, containing one carbon atom, which would be this one here, the first letter of that is going to be with an M. And the name of the whole compound is methane. Okay, so that compound is methane, it has the formula C, one carbon, and one, two, three, four, four hydrogens. The second one is known as ethane. And if I were to draw that out, I would find that I would have two carbon atoms and six hydrogen atoms. The third one is called propane. And that is this one here. And you can if you have a look at this one, I've got one, two, three carbon atoms and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen atoms. And the fourth one, butane. Similar, um, similar idea again, if you were to draw this out, making sure all the bonds are single, you would find it would have C4H10. Okay, and there is a pattern, um, a pattern between all of these um, different substances. And so if we look at our formula here, we can come up with what we call a general formula. Okay, so how do I get from the number of carbon atoms to the number of hydrogens? Well, let's call the number of carbon atoms N. And what you'll spot is that for each of these, the number of hydrogen atoms is simply double the number of carbon atoms and then plus two. So for example, if I've got three carbon atoms times by two, I'd have six plus two gives me eight hydrogens. I can represent that as a general formula, a CnH2n plus two. And this just means double the number of carbon atoms and add two. So my alkanes, they've got entirely single bonds. Um, and every carbon atom always has to have four um, um, covalent bonds to it. So let's say you were asked to draw the structure of ethane. Because it's ethane, you're going to have all single bonds. If you think back to our mnemonic, um, mnemonic monkeys eat purple bananas, we're going to have two carbon atoms. So you'd simply draw two carbon atoms connected by a single bond and then make sure every carbon has got a total of four single bonds to it. So ethane would look like this. There are different types of hydrocarbons that we'll look at in a later video. Um, but what is important to remember is that by definition, hydrocarbons contain carbon and hydrogen atoms only. 
So they're not allowed to contain any other elements. They just have carbon and hydrogen inside them. So this is great. We've, we've uh, worked out how we can name some of these um, hydrocarbons, some of these alkanes in particular. But what we need to know now is how we can separate um, the mixture of crude oil into different um, parts called fractions. Crude oil itself is extremely thick and viscous and gloopy, and it's not really very useful for anything. So we've got um, we've got too much of a mixture, too many different um, sizes of uh, chains in there, which makes it not useful. So we have to separate it, and to do that, we do fractional distillation. Now, distillation involves heating, and uh, this case is no um, no exception. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in crude oil. To the bottom of our column here which we call a fractionating column um, and we need to apply heat now it's really important you don't write burn here a lot of students will write you burn the crude oil but that would actually it would um, you know you, you would get rid of the hydrocarbons you turn into something else you don't want to do that all you want to do is heat them up and evaporate or boil off the different uh, length of uh, chains and what we actually find is the short chains are boil at the lowest temperatures so the the bottom of our um, bottom of our column here is going to be very hot whereas the top is going to be comparatively cool and what happens is our um, hydrocarbons will start to boil off and as they cool down they will condense okay so a medium length chain would condense at this point okay a short chain will condense higher up the really long chains will either condense very low down or won't evaporate in the first place and what we find is out of the top of the column we get um, um, we get fraction which don't um, don't condense at all. Okay, we call these refinery gases. So this is things like methane, ethane, um, propane, which we can bottle and use as fuels. So things like color gas, camping gas, and those blue gas bottles um, is refinery gases from the fractional distillation of crude oil. Next, we get petroleum, which can be refined further and be turned into petrol. Um, after that, we get something called naphtha, which is used to make a lot of chemicals. It's really important. Um, it's really important, important starting materials to make things like plastics, things like that. Um, after that, we get diesel. So again, uses a fuel in cars and lorries and trains. Next, we get um, fuel oil. Sorry, I've made a mistake here. We get kerosene after that, which is used as a fuel in jets. Then we get diesel. Followed by fuel oil. This is used as um, a fuel in uh, in, in uh, big ships. Uh, fuel tank is very very important. Next we get things which actually are too um, large to be able to be used as fuels. So we get things called lubricating oils. And finally, the solids and residue we get left over, we actually use it to surface roads. So it is we do make use of it, and we call that bitumen. Right, so how are all these uh, fractions different? Clearly, as we um, as the chain length gets longer, the boiling point decreases. So the short chains at the top have got a low boiling point, whereas the long chains at the bottom have got higher boiling points. All of these gases and petrol and naphtha and kerosene are, are, quite, are quite flammable. So our short chains are very flammable. Whereas our longer chains are le much, much less flammable. These um, products at the top, petrol is extremely runny. The uh, proper scientific word for that is non viscous. So, viscosity is to do with how, um, um, how thick or gloopy a material is, how, how basically how long it takes to run. Uh, our longer chains here, lubricating oil is extremely viscous. It is a liquid, but it um, it runs very, very slowly. So we'd say they're very viscous. And this is really all we need to know. The key stages in separating crude oil into useful products um, are heating up the crude oil, evaporating um, the different hydrocarbons, condensing them and collecting them. So make sure you use those keywords, evaporating, condense, collect, and you should get good marks on these questions.